Chapter 4 Dr. Pickle Actually, his name was Dr. Pickell, with the accent on the second syllable, but that wasn't why everyone called him Dr. Pickle. Dr. Pickle was a psychiatrist. He had thick eyebrows and wore tiny glasses. He had a small beard on the tip of his pointed chin. A psychiatrist is a doctor who doesn't cure people with sick bodies. He cures people with sick minds. Although, Dr. Pickle had a pretty sick mind himself. One day, a woman came into his office. She smoked too much, and she wanted him to help her quit. I know that smoking is no good for me, she said as she puffed on her cigarette. It's bad for my heart, it fills my lungs with gunk, and my husband won't kiss me because my breath stinks. But I can't quit. She finished her cigarette, smushed it out in an ashtray, then immediately lit another one. Have a seat, said Dr. Pickle. She sat down on the couch. Look into my eyes, said Dr. Pickle. The woman stared into his deep, penetrating eyes. Dr. Pickle held up a gold chain. At the end of the chain was a green stone that was almost transparent, but not quite. It looked like a pickle. Hence his name. Watch the pickle, he said as he gently moved the chain. The pickle went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The woman's eyes went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Put down your cigarette, Dr. Pickle said in a strong but gentle voice. The woman set her cigarette in the ashtray as she continued to stare at the pickle. You are getting sleepy, said Dr. Pickle. Your eyelids are getting heavy. The woman blinked her eyes. When I count to three, said Dr. Pickle, you will fall into a deep, deep sleep. One, two, three. The woman's eyes closed. Dr. Pickle put down the pickle. Can you hear me? He asked. Yes, said the woman in a low voice from deep inside her. You will do what I say, said Dr. Pickle. I will do what you say, the woman repeated. I am going to count to five, said Dr. Pickle, and then you will wake up. And as usual, you will want to smoke a cigarette. I will want to smoke a cigarette, the woman repeated. But when you put the cigarette in your mouth, said Dr. Pickle, it will feel just like a worm, a wiggling, slimy worm. A yucky, icky worm, repeated the woman. Good, said Dr. Pickle. Now just one more thing. He rubbed his beard and smiled. Whenever your husband says the word potato, you will slap him. When Fred says potato, I will slap him. Good, said Dr. Pickle. He counted to five. The woman woke up. So, do you think you can help me? She asked in her normal voice as she reached for her cigarette. Dr. Pickle shrugged. She put her cigarette in her mouth then screamed as she pulled it out. She looked at the cigarette, puzzled. Huh? she said. She placed it back in her mouth, then spit it onto the floor. I'm sorry, she said a little confused. She picked up the cigarette and put it in the ashtray. That's all right, said Dr. Pickle. She took out a new cigarette from her pack, but as soon as she put that in her mouth, she spit it out too. I'm sorry, she said again. I don't know what's come over me. She walked out of his office, shaking her head. She dropped her pack of cigarettes in the garbage. She never smoked again. It was an interesting thing about the word potato. Whenever Fred said it, she slapped him. And he'd ask her why she slapped him, but she never remembered doing it, so they'd get in a big fight, each calling the other one crazy. Then they'd kiss and make up, which was nice because her breath didn't stink. They never figured out it had anything to do with saying potato. How could they? But deep down, they both must have realized it somehow, because while they used to eat lots of potatoes, 
they gradually ate fewer and fewer until they finally stopped eating them altogether. Dr. Pickle was a good doctor, but he kept playing those kinds of jokes on people. There was a woman who quacked like a duck whenever she saw a freight train with more than 20 cars. There was a man who took off his shoe any time someone said parking meter. Eventually, Dr. Pickle was caught and he was no longer allowed to practice psychiatry. So he had to find another job. He became a counselor at an elementary school.